Escape the Dark Castle. This is a cooperative and solo game in the same family, in the same line uh, of Escape the Dark Sector, which I reviewed in a previous video. Uh, Castle is first and Sector was the sequel I played in the opposite order. Sometimes just that's just the way it is. I wanted to play Castle also because I like Escape the Dark Sector so much, so I wanted to have more of the same. Um, just like in the other game, this is a game that is a lot about the storytelling, about the kind of situations that the game generates, about the surprises of discovering what's going on. And so I'm not going to show you any of the components in the box, so just to be sure to avoid spoilers. So to explain how the game works in general, I'll show you the back of the box and the components that are here, which I assume the publisher thought we're okay to show you. If that, even that is too much, just make sure to watch with your eyes closed and on mute and you'll be fine. So, Escape the Dark Castle. The player or players uh, represent uh, fantasy characters from, from the humble populace. No paladin, no necromancer here, more like Taylor, Cook and Tanner. A group of these people have been trapped inside this dark castle and now they're trying to, uh, to make an escape. You know, in game terms, that represent that, that that means that each character, each player, will have a character card representing them. So they have a sense you can latch onto a fantasy character whose role you're playing. There will be a unique die, which really is what matters the most because that generates different effects. Uh, you will have item cards that you can find in different ways and you can spend uh, to generate different effects. And most importantly, you will have uh, cards representing the challenges that you need to face. Uh, you have 45 of these challenging car challenge cards. You shuffle them at the beginning of the game and you randomly draw 15 and those represent the present challenge. You also have three bosses. Take a random boss, put it at the bottom, and so 15 challenges and a boss. If you're able to, to go through all of them without any uh, party member dying, you win the game. Now, um, that means uh, that you'll be able to play three games uh, if you so desire without ever seeing any repeats. You just those 15 cards, you set them aside, and then you use 15 more in the other boss, and then 15 more in the other boss. So three games any, without any repeats, and then you shuffle them all together to generate the following dungeons, because this is really what we're talking about, is dungeon escaping rather than dungeon delving. Um, and so really you got a lot of variety, which again, to me, is extremely important in a game uh, that has the storytelling element, that has that interesting element that comes from see what happens, the, the discover what's going on. Uh, it's really fun to me that these large challenge cards, which are larger than even tarot cards, the back is completely black, nothing, just pure solid black, which if that, oh, couldn't even put something nice, uh, fun, cute looking. Um, I like that because it really gives me the sense of a dark room, a dark tunnel that I'm exploring as I flip the card. So, you're going to have your card with your character, a die with unique symbols, you need pen and paper uh, or pencil, uh, the writing implements to keep track of the health of your characters. Once you shuffle the deck to create the dungeon, you're, you're good to go. It sets up very quickly. The idea is that a specific character will flip the next card, so you have to decide who does that that character will encounter the thing because there may be, again, effects that will target a character specifically. Once you have that, you go with it. Each card has a black and white illustration, which is very atmospheric. It has some, many of these have some pretty dark tones, which are not too horrific. I played the game solo and also played it with my kid, Lou. Uh, they are they're 11 now. They also watch Aliens, so they're not, they're, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty tough, they're pretty resilient, but uh, the style of illustration, since I assume most of the people playing this will be uh, middle-aged uh, gamers such as myself, you may uh, recognize the style, it's very similar to the fighting fantasy game books that we had back in the day, and again, here comes the first spoiler from the box, that really looks like the kind of monster, the kind of illustration you could find in Warlock or Fighter Mountain, or 
one of those great classics. So you're gonna have an illustration that really draws you in, really builds the atmosphere, and then a description of the event. Sometimes it's just a description and you implement a game effect as described. Sometimes you have a choice, wanna do this, wanna do that. And then it's, so that element also makes this game reminiscent of a game book, of, of a procedural randomly generated mini game book with decisions inside each card. And then some of these cards will present you with fights, and then you need to fight. There are dedicated dark dice with, uh, with these symbols here, and different monsters will have a different amount. So, for example, here it says uh, this monster generates a wisdom die, has a wisdom die, and also a little symbol here that represents, looks like a pawn in a game. That means one die per player, or one die per character. So, for example, if a monster has a wisdom symbol and the pawn symbol, and we have three characters, we take three dice and we roll them. And so, either it's written already, or a combination of written symbols and dice that are rolled, each monster will have a number of dice showing symbols. And in order to kill that monster, you need to produce symbols to match them a wisdom for a wisdom, a cunning for a cunning, and, and, and so on and so forth, until you produce all the dice, all the symbols that, that were there. So once all of those symbols are removed from the monster, you defeat the monster and you gain a reward, which usually will be to draw an item from a deck of cards representing items that you find. So, there is a random element here for sure, but there's also a resource management because you can use abilities and items to, uh, to change things a little bit. The general idea is when the monster attacks, we're gonna roll, everybody rolls their dice and you produce symbols. And again, any matching symbol you produce reduces, re uh, removes a symbol from the pool of the monster. After we're all, we're all is said and done, if the monster still has symbols, they get to attack. There's a number of health points that they inflict as damage on you, and you can try to reduce those by using effects. Also, during your die roll, if your own die showed the outline of a shield, then you do not take damage. But the general back and forth is very simple. Roll dice and generate effects to generate symbols, remove matching symbols, eat the monster still there, you take damage unless you produce ways of reducing or of reducing or avoiding that. Repeat the procedure until uh, one of the two parties is not there anymore, which may be the monster, in which case you advance, which may be you or one of you, in which case you lose the game. Uh, that's the general idea really of the game and the general architecture, so I'm not giving you uh, spoilers there. And uh, it's fun. It's a fun adventure. If you watch my review of Escape the Dark Sector, in short, it's really very similar. Uh, it's the same kind of game. It's the same game system with a different topic, a different atmosphere. And it just so happens, my personal taste, I prefer fantasy to science fiction. I love science fiction, but I love fantasy even more. It just has a powerful archetypal draw to me. I don't know why I like it so much, but I do. And to me, for I would say for this, that reason alone, this game appeals to me more than Escape the Dark Sector. While both are excellent, mind you, they're both excellent games, great solo, great cop games. Um, so if you're going to ask me, hey, if you can only have one, which one should it be? You tell me if you like science fiction or fantasy. They're basically the same, the game, the same game system with different topics and therefore, however, different choices, different decisions. I like how some of the monsters will give you different tactical options. Like you can head on, in which case uh, the fight is going to be easier because you inflict more damage, so the monster has fewer symbols you need to match. But if you don't defeat them. Uh, then they give you more damage when it's their time, or you're more cautious, in which case the fight may last longer, there are more symbols you need to defeat, but they give you less damage. Uh, when I play with Lou, it's a no-brainer. They always want to go just charge in and destroy the monsters. But the variety, the, the different art that you have, the different challenges, really brings the setting to life, really gives you the kind of experience that I believe was 
was meant to be in this design, which is again a narrative experience, a fighting fantasy kind of experience, a game book kind of experience, almost like a simple light role playing game. So game where the where the DM, uh, the game master, has been automatized and turned into a set of cards. But more than that, again, the experience if a is a game book kind of experience. Uh, which uh, will have, of course, some repeats after a while, but really there's going to be a lot of variety. Even when you start playing with cards you've seen before, uh, the order in which you draw them, the fact that you only use a third of the card every time, cards every time, that will give you a great variety. But again, and, 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 and of course luck is going to play a role, but it is the kind of luck that I don't mind in games, it is the kind of luck that I like because it is a lock that generates a lot of random factors all the time, but each having only a small impact. You're not gonna die because your character loses one life point. You're gonna die because your character loses one life point over a long period of times in a lot of die rolls around which you will be able to make decisions about which items you're going to use and when you're going to spend one-time items. And you cannot load a lot of characters. You load is only... Sorry, you cannot load a lot of items. You can only carry two items. Decisions are there, what I leave behind and what they carry with me. Again, uh, which tactic to use, charging or not charging. There are a lot of decisions that over the arc of the story you feel that will matter or may matter. My point is that you generate enough random factors that there's going to be the, 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 the bell, the curve that we like so much and you get the sense that indeed your strategy overall still matters. And there will be games where you roll incredibly poorly or very, very well and that's fine also because maybe the story goes that way. Again, it is not a game about maximizing strategy. Euro games are for that. It's a game about experiencing a crazy, mysterious, unpredictable adventure in a dark, scary environment where things happen you don't expect, and that's good because we like plot twists in stories, but where you do still get the feeling that your decisions matter, your decisions impact the story. When you win, when you defeat the final boss, you do get sense that you were this hero that was able to complete this crazy uh, ordeal, to survive the ordeal. And again, I like that some of the unusual elements of the atmosphere, such as your commoners becoming heroes uh, through, through trial and toil, rather than somehow you trained at the Witch Academy, you trained at the Cleric Academy, you're a warrior monk with 20 spells. And then you still die? Again, that may happen. Uh, but the fact that you're a commoner going through all these things and still sometimes surviving, well, that makes for a different kind of experience. So, Escape the Dark Castle. My conclusions uh, are, are going to be very simple. You probably already figured them out. I think I already told you, actually, that the game is very similar in essence, spirit, and mechanics to Escape the Dark Sector with a fantasy uh, theme here, but they there's still enough variety, different challenges, different experiences. I don't feel like one or two games is just the other one with the topic pasted on. I feel that the setting feels pretty immersive, draws you in, and you really feel it's a different kind of experience in a different setting, not the same experience just having been uh, slightly touched up cosmetically. Escape the Dark Castle, an engrossing, story-driven experience in a dark fantasy world. It's an experience that I like very much and I recommend to solo and co cooperative players who are in that looking for a game that tells you a good story with simple mechanics and yet still engaging strategy.